Welcome to the Golden Crane Award-winning Color Success Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie J. Wong. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm so excited to have a couple on our show, um, our first couple, Rika and uh, Christopher Kluver, and uh, they are going to introduce themselves, and I'm so happy for them to be here. Thank you, Stephanie, for uh, having us on your show. We really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Rika Kluver wife of Chris Cleaver, and we work together on Life on Your Terms. Um, I'm a certified marriage and family therapist and coach, helping people, people improve their relationships. I am a long distance runner with 50 miles in uh, Leadville being the furthest I have run. That's amazing. <laughs> And yeah, I have, to chase, of Chris. I have to chase her around. So my name is Chris Kluver, um, <laughs> and I'm Rika's husband. And I am uh, an entrepreneur. I started my first of 19 or 15 businesses when I was 19. Uh, I built them, bought them, wrecked them, sold them, you name it, I've been involved. I've helped thousands of, uh, of or hundreds of companies, thousands of hours of facilitation. Studied strategy at Harvard uh, Business School for uh, entrepreneurial strategy. I'm a fellow at York University, and I've got four books. For for me, um, I just like to try and keep up with Rika, and we are so fortunate that we are living life on our terms and thrive. Thank you so much, both of you. And I see your books in your background. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sending me Life on Your Own Terms. I, I read it actually in a day, so it's uh, very digestible, really easy to understand, and really put it into perspective. The interesting part is I talked with you before and I met you. So I was like, that, that sounds like Chris, like mentoring this guy <laughs> in, <laughs> you know, going around in his RV. Um, so I wanted to get started and just, if you can tell the audience, what does it mean to live life on your own terms? So, so life on your terms is, comes from the fact that I've had the good fortune to work with a lot of very successful companies. We've built a bunch of very successful companies. And over and over and over, both Rika and I continue to see these people who've hit all of these amazing default goals. In fact, a lot of times they've achieved more success than they ever dreamed possible. And yet, if they're really honest with themselves, they're, they're not in a position that they're really excited. They're not truly happy because in many cases, they've, they've abdicated that narrative of what success is. They've given that away to the wine commercials or maybe the scarcity mindsets of parents and peers. Right. And they're, they're unfulfilled. So living life on your terms is, is starting and stepping back and looking on a holistic level and redefining success. And then based on that, being as intentional and proactive as you can and building a plan so that you're completely in alignment with your spouse, creating a champion, not a saboteur. And, and when you start dreaming together, you start sharing those visions, you start communicating well, and then you put a lot of intentionality and strategic planning behind it, anything becomes possible. So how did both of you meet? Because you're you're talking a lot about coming together as a couple and you both have a lot of your own interests, but also shared. Well, because we love travel, we both happen to be on the same ship called the Navimag. Is it the Navimag, Chris? Yes. yes going from in southern Chile, going from Puerto Aden to Puerto Natales. It was the ship that was a three-night, four-day ship that traveled through the inner passage of Patagonia, Chile. And we happened to both be on the same ship. And so we met because this hairdresser from Sydney, Australia, called Robert, happened to be in the middle of us, and he had already offered us both Haircuts, and at that time it was <laughs> 1998. He had his scissors with him, so now you can't carry your scissors with him. You know that 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 portfolio of his scissors. So he had all of that, and so he offered myself a haircut, offered Chris a haircut, and um, we happened. To, he happened to be in the middle of us lining up for some food, and he introduced us. Uh, it was a uh, it was a pretty it was an amazing experience for for Rika. She had been a, an accountant for a VC firm in London and had been saving for a house for a few years and the deal fell through. And Rika ended up traveling for almost two years. And um, I had a, a small exit with a business that I owned in 98. 
And I took a year and traveled around the world and hit all seven continents in a poser move. And, and, uh, and we happened to meet on this freighter and it was not the most extravagant accommodations. I was on the same deck as the trailers full of horses and oranges. You know, our economics were very different, but it was a, it was a wonderful experience. Now this smells wonderful as I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get these haircuts. Okay. And so how does that lead you to then get to talking and become a, eventually a couple? Well, um, while he was having his hair cut, I was flirting with him a little bit. Uh, and then um, we got sitting together and <laughs> he said, my feet were cold. And he said, well, you know, if you put your feet under my thighs, they'll get warm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So really? he was flirting back. <laughs> yes, he's flirting back, doing his, yeah. And I'm like, this is kind of strange. What shall I do with this? And then a few seconds pass by or so. And then I say, okay, I'll give it a try. So that's how we just got talking and we talked and talked and talked and talked from the time we had our haircuts till like the late evening. He invited me out for a date on the ship. And then he went running around looking for a blanket and chocolate and wine <laughs> to make this date and find a place to have a date on the ship. Hopefully away from the horses. <laughs> yes, but it wasn't it, it was it wasn't much better. But the first day it actually our first day lasted almost six weeks and included Antarctica in it. So it was uh it was it was pretty spectacular. Well, mm -hmm. that's amazing. You can only, you know, laugh now at, at that aspect of it, but also wow, how special is that? And what a sounds like a K drama to me. So that that's amazing. Um <laughs> how did you guys get into this? life on your terms framework and and build this this mantra to help so many people so i think um i've been doing goals since i was 12 <laughs> and and it's something that that i was taught and is just kind of how i'm wired and i've done them in a lot of different ways and rika and i have tried and rika humored me to be very candid for years when it came to doing goals. And we did all sorts of versions and structures and all sorts of things. And, and I ended up becoming the work that I do with businesses where I really help them to scale and grow. We do a lot of strategic planning where we look at values. We look at the things that really, really matter to an organization. And, and we started doing that for ourselves. And then I had kind of an epiphany about seven years ago when my head, my hip and my knee replaced. And uh, I, I found myself um, stranded on the couch and I, I couldn't do anything, couldn't read. I'm just, so I'm watching TV and, and candidly, I, so daytime TV is a scary place. And I, I learned what a Cardassian was and oh my God, it scared the pants off me. <laughs> but the thing that really made me nauseous was that here's a group of people that have amazing success. They're beautiful. They have all the trimmings. They knew all the people, fame, fortune. And yet it seemed like mostly what they did was complain. And I realized that the metrics I was using, that Rika and I had been using for setting the bar, more me than Rika, Rika is very down to earth, was, was very similar to what the Cardassians were. And I'm just like, whoa, that's not right. I mean, it, it's fine for some people, don't get me wrong. And I, I love that we have multiple homes and the BMWs and stuff, it's great. but. But to me, it's not the only measure of success. And it was through that process, through that, that bit of, uh, of enlightenment that started us really honing in on life on your terms. That combined with the fact that consistently seeing with the senior leaders that I work with all over the world, how often they, they've reached a, a tremendous financial success, but not necessarily a, a personal fulfillment. Definitely. I would Rika. also add, sorry. No, um, go ahead. I was going to say, Rika, what, what about, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would add that, yes, Chris is correct, that I was um, going along with goal setting because I didn't really understand it. It wasn't something we did in my family. Um, you kind of went with what kind of came about in, in to some degree, you know, jobs fell in your lap, that sort of thing. And But um, 
when we started doing the goals, we did them, we did do them for different areas of our life. And we did them year in, year out. And then uh, one year he said, you know, let's review and see how we've done. And he pulled out uh, all the sheets uh, that showed our goals. And uh, remarkably, all the things that we had written down and said we would like to do were coming about. They may not have come about exactly that year or, or in, in that order, but they did happen. So when you see like when you see it like that, like it's written down and then it's happened, that really makes it um, very um, like, wow, we've got to do, you know, this is something real and it, and it works and it's, uh, it's not just magic, but it feels magical. <laughs> so so that, Absolutely. that was it too. I put the wheel on my whiteboard, but um, I've been using a passion planner for years and um, really has that strategic mapping and five-year goals and all those things. Um, again, I've, I've tried to be a little bit more balanced and say, you know, my goal this year is to have less goals because I think I'm, I've been so goal-driven all these years and people laugh, but, you know, Michelle Yao, um, uh, the actress really talks about what am I going to learn today? And I think even that's a value, right? Is like, how can you scale back if you're super type A and 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 really kind of be more present in the moment? Um, so one thing I'm really interested in, so like I told Chris, I've been with my husband for over 20 years. We're high school sweethearts. And uh, so we've definitely been more trial and error with, we don't sit down and do strategic planning. God, he doesn't even want me to talk about psychology um, to him because he's like, don't talk to me like one of your patients. <laughs> so as I'm sure maybe Krista said what, at one point or another. No, um, never, never. No. <laughs> but <laughs> how do you guys do a strategic plan as a couple? So, so you said that you use the, you had the balance wheel there. Yes. And there's a there's a tool and any of your listeners are welcome to go to it. It's on our homepage at lifeon-yourterms.com. And, and we use that as a starting point, primarily to create awareness. And, and one of the big things that I see, particularly with hard driving entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, is entrepreneurs don't want to listen. They don't want to, they just want to solve and fix. And that's where we really, really encourage the concept and the idea of having a spirit of curiosity. So if, if Rika has a vision of something and I have a completely different vision, my traditional male entrepreneur is to just be defensive and say, no, you're wrong. This is why and explain it. But if I can, if I can transition that thinking and reframe my mindset and say, okay, help me understand why you're thinking this. I want to understand your perspective. Because it's so easy for us to become saboteurs for one another. We put those walls up really fast. And, and if we can lean in more to that spirit of curiosity, help me understand. Okay. And then, well, what would amazing look like for that? And then how can we support and how can we help achieve that? So that in some cases has a lot to do like with Rika's running. You know, that's a big time commitment, but I know it's important. I think it may be crazy at times. I do a little bit of it, but not to the same degree. But I know it's important for her. So help me understand why. Okay, got it. Now I'm your blocker. I got your back. What do we need to do? And then, and it's the same thing when it comes to start setting dreams and goals and other pieces. But Rika, how would you, what would you say to that? Do you, do you agree, disagree? Where's your head go? I'd say it's about the strategic, ugh, strategic plan is about supporting each other, just like you said. Um and that you really have to understand what the other one really want, wants to do so that you can get it and then talk about it and understand it. Because if you don't understand, then you're not going to support it necessarily, or you're just going to be like, what, what, what? What's that all about? But if you talk about it a little bit more and investigate, and as Chris said, have a spirit of curiosity and wonderment rather than closing it down because you don't really get it. Um, that really helps. I'd say, um, you know, you really have to listen to each other and talk it talk it through. Um, so I think that's what's happened with us with our strategic plan. We do things individually, like what we're after, as well as what things do we want to do together. And so that um, he has his goals, I have mine for the year, and then as a couple, we do things together. And um, that really helps. 
to know that. Stephanie, I think Rika hit on something that's really, really important. And this was a light bulb moment for us this year. Because there's been times where we really have done this. I hate to say that, but it's the truth because we're a couple. But um, we, we got to a point where when we have that spirit of curiosity, it's not just that, but it's also giving each other permission. And we, we physically, we actually say it out loud. It sounds silly, but Rika, I give you permission to, to focus on those areas and live it in your, in your fashion. And then she did it for me as well. And it doesn't mean that we're, you know, separating. It just means that I'm giving her permission to live her life her way. She's giving me permission my way. And then we spend a lot of time together where we, we intertwine it. But so I have big dreams for pushing and building life on your terms a lot faster than Rika does. And there was some friction there because I wanted her to, to be as excited and, and run on the same treadmill as me. But at a certain point, she's like, I don't want to. And I, I, I got frustrated with that. I got angry, which is inappropriate, but I did. But then when I gave her permission to say no, and she said, no, but I give you permission to go at light speed. Just go run your legs off. Have fun with it. It was, it was unbelievably empowering just to have those basic words. I would say also giving ourselves permission. So not only have we given each other permission to do what we, the, the other wants to do and go as fast or as slow as you want to go, um, we've also given ourselves permission to do the very thing that we want to do. And I think I think that was a very, um, that was probably one of the best things we did for ourselves, which was to give each other permission that way. It really, like it freed us to, you know, Chris could go do his thing and he runs a million miles an hour. And I am, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a snail. I, I kind of crawl along just slowly, slowly. And, um, but you know what? That's how we operate. And so if you give each other permission to go at the pace you want and what you want to do, you know, it really works. I'd say that has been um, a tremendous asset to us or a gift. I'd say a gift. Oh, I'm glad you guys brought that up because I'm I'm at that point with our podcast and my husband's like, I don't want to grow the YouTube channel and things like that. And so I think there's a there's a point where there's a parallel here. My husband's very type B and just like super easygoing and um, doesn't even care to set goals. Um, he's doing quite well in his life. <laughs> like it's fun. Um, but one of the things that comes up in a lot of, with a lot of the couples that I work with, you know, in the Bay area, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a different beast in this bubble. People, as uh, Chris alluded to, you know, have this level of success either out of the scarcity of mindset or really trying to survive here, right. To stay in this area is just so expensive. Um, for me, I refuse to get kicked out of my home because <laughs> I was born and raised here. I'm like, okay, transplants, like I'm still, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do what I can. Um, but a lot of couples say, you know, Dr. Wong, I don't really have the time to sit down and have these conversations um, because I'm, I am, I have a job. We have kids, we have to do X, Y, Z. So what are some ways that couples can carve out time or what are your suggestions in terms of how to begin these conversations, even if they're brief to start? So, so to me, I, I look at it as we only have three things in this world that we can leverage. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. Treasure being our money and stuff. And most people focus on our dollars and stuff, and that's probably the most fictitious, and it's the easiest to lose, and it's the easiest to make. Our talent, as long as we can continue to sharpen our tools and educate ourselves, as long as we don't lose our marbles, that, that grows. But it's our time that is without a doubt our most valuable asset. And it's the one that we allow to be distracted, we waste, we expend, and we, we, we don't put nearly the intentionality behind it. And I've found that, that preaching the concepts of being very, very present, if, if, if people could do one thing and just be present in everything they're doing, be very, very, very present, I think you can actually almost bend time because you can get a lot more done being very present with one thing at a time. I think being proactive with how we engage with our devices and the platforms and everything else is, is a train wreck. And we need to be proactive because it just is, it's specifically designed to tie, hijack our time. And oddly, I think if we can start with the very cornerstone 
of focusing on sleep. How do we get the very best sleep we can? How do we go to bed with just the clearest, best intention? Seeing how much you're filled with gratitudes, go to sleep, and then when you wake up, how do you, how do you fill yourself with gratitude and set your intentions for the day? Those, those minor little bitty tweaks of arbitrage start to give you time throughout the day. And it allows you to start becoming much, much more proactive with it. But Rika, do you have any other suggestions? Well, I think, um, yeah, time is uh, something we don't necessarily, we, we could value more in a sense, as well as make time to have dates or to uh, make the couple a priority in talking. So 20 minutes in the morning or 20 minutes at night before bed, uh, just saying, so what are your dreams? And it doesn't have to be, it just is talking and dreaming and sharing. And it's about, I think, carving out the time, not just thinking it's going to happen. Of course, people get sleepy at, time, at night and don't want to do it so then they think about doing it in the morning but then people are rushing around to get their kids off to school and themselves off to work I think if you actually schedule the time maybe you have a lunch date maybe you have a breakfast date maybe you know you can do it but I think you have to make yourself a priority and say let's schedule some time to talk about what we'd like to do in the next year and uh, let's because if you don't, it won't happen. Everything else will happen. Like the schools will get, to, the kids will get to school. The kids will get to their evening programs. You'll work out, maybe. Uh, you'll do your things. But if you don't schedule it out, it won't happen. So I think it's if it's something important to you as a couple, it's not saying that you don't have the time. It's scheduling out the time and making it a priority, I think, is what's what makes it happen. So Rika, one one thing that's really interesting to me is you mentioned, well, Chris mentioned that you're an accountant in a VC and now you are a therapist. And so how did you make that pivot and kind of take that jump? Because there, I'm sure there's a lot of relatable things between the two in terms of the people that you see, but it is a different, a different chapter of your life. Yes, you're, you're right. Um, I'm very fortunate that my husband supported me, 100% encouraged me to do something that made me happy and made me gave me pleasure, gave me a purpose, made me feel good about myself. And accounting wasn't doing it for me. Um, I didn't really work with people. I worked for bosses that wanted numbers to be a certain way. And I really didn't enjoy it. I didn't like what what it was all about, truly. And, and Chris was my biggest supporter and said, you know, if you want to do go back to school and do something, do it and figure out what it is you want to do. And somehow, I'm not sure how I fell into this. I think it was because we had a therapist ourselves. I thought I was pretty smart. Chris is smart. And we could figure out how to, how to work out our own problems. But we couldn't. Uh, we kept doing this thing this cycle this dance that was horrible mm -hmm. so we went and saw Gail her name was Gail and she really helped us a lot and I thought wow she had a really she really influenced us she really helped us and I thought if she could help us what if I could help others with their marriages and with their relationships so I think she really was the catalyst for me but I didn't do anything with it for a long long time and that was back in when we got married, really, right, Chris? 2000, 2001, when we met Gail. Um, About five years later, you went back to school. Right. Well, actually, much later than that. It, you know, you're right. I went back to school in you 2005. Started testing waters here and there and then four Yeah, years. that's right. I took a course with this professor. It was just like a summer course, and it was about marriage, and it was about communication. So I did that and I thought, well, that was interesting and I really liked that. And then I didn't pursue anything for another few years. And then I decided that, wow, I really should just do it. Like I need to do something different. And as I said, Chris was really my biggest fan and supporter and motivator. And so just, you know, if you want to do it, do it. So then I had to go through this whole process. I had a degree back in the UK that I had to transfer into the US. I had to compile this 
booklet. We compiled all these booklets and sent them off to these different universities to enter into their different master's program for um, counseling, uh, for counsel education and marriage and family therapy and emphasis with marriage and family therapy. So that's how I did it. I was 40 at the time, but I would say maybe it took a couple of years to get my GRE, compile this booklet, just figure out what was needed and, and work on it. And once I decided this was what I was going to do, I worked to it. I just, I, I was focused and I got it done. I, I did what everything, anything I had to do to get it done. Um, so yeah, I started back to school. I did another, I did a summer class with the, with the university. Um, and it was a, I was a non-graduate. So if I liked it, then I could, they could become graduate it credits towards my degree. And I was really scared actually, because I didn't, I was, too, I felt old. <laughs> I thought I'm the only one that's going to be in the class, like 40. And I, I wasn't sure that, you know, I'd keep up and everything like that. It was 20 years again, again, you know, 20, 15 years that I hadn't been to school. So here I am. And actually it was probably the best thing I did uh, because I learned a lot about myself I was yes I was with some younger people but there were older people too and it was a great experience it was an evening program so it helped you if you were working you could work in the day and go to school at night so it was a master's at University of Colorado Denver that I got so yeah um yeah I'd say Chris encouraged me and then I had to do all the work to get it put it all together and then you know go to school and do everything like that but I, I could be a bit stubborn and resistant to change I'm a big <laughs> I know Chris would agree with this and and he'd say yes it's like dragging her but once I decide <laughs> to do something I do get it done and I I go for it so anyway that's how it happened for me it was just reading different books about marriage and um yeah that's how it kind of came about and like I said Chris he was my, if you want to do something different, do something different. You don't have to be an accountant. <laughs> well, Chris, how did you have that optimism and encouragement when Rico was like, Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> how did you like continue to motivate yourself to be that light? I guess for, for, for Rika, for me, um, don't let this go to your head, but I think that Rika can do anything. I think Rika's the the so so I know Rika when when Rika chooses to do something, her nickname is either Little Miss Badass or Trouble because when she decides to do it, she does it. And I know how smart she is. It's just a matter of choosing to do that. And I and I think for most people, Stephanie, that's the biggest challenge is figuring out what we really want, particularly with high bandwidth people. Most most high bandwidth people, if they decide they want to do something, then everything else is just mechanics and it's just a matter of doing it. Sure. And, and that's where if people can dream big, that helps. The other thing that I think is incredibly important if people can, and this, is, this comes from my first book, The Aspiring Solopreneur, but making sure that they're living within their means or even below their means. When you do that, you have so many more options. You know, if we had been right at the edge of a credit limit and across the board with cars and houses and stuff, we would have been in a lot of trouble. It would have been very, it would have been a lot, a bigger headwind. But by choosing to, to live simply and embrace and have a lot of fun with what we had and, and we could live easily on what I was making, it empowered us to have the ability for Rika to, 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 to invest that time to explore where she wanted to go, to test those waters to trip and fall and figure it out and try it again and look at this avenue. But I think um, dreaming big and figuring out what you want and then building the plan around how you're going to do it are the two most critical pieces. Absolutely. Yeah, you brought up some nightmares for me, Rika. The GRE, it was the bane of my existence back then. And <laughs> putting together packets for PhD programs, my husband helped me do that and send them all out and Back then, it was all like making photocopies of, of letters and things. Now I sound old. Um, but, um, I understand that. I had to do yeah, the same. So. It, exactly. Um, and, you know, interviewing in all these places. And University of Colorado Denver is a, a great 
great program. I think I interviewed there uh, um, back in the day. So, um, but you bring up a really great point, Chris, which is how do people balance their dreams with the practicalities of life? You know, there's a lot of things that energize us, but at the end of the day, we still have to, if we're going to live in the society, we still have to pay bills and, you know, send our kids to school if we so choose to help them with that and so forth. There's a, there's a saying, and unfortunately I don't remember who said it, but it, it goes something along the lines that, that human beings dramatically tend to dramatically overestimate what they can do in a year and extremely underestimate what they can do in 10. And to me, it's a matter of having that vision and looking much further out and then really building that plan and, and being very intentional with it and being ruthlessly consistent. You know, what is that in a compassionate way? Rika and I actually, we have our date night scheduled for Friday. So we're going to be having our date night this evening and we're going to actually go out and we'll review our plan this evening. But I think it's a matter of defining where you want to go. And then once you've defined it, it doesn't mean you get everything and it doesn't mean it happens tomorrow, but it does mean that we can start figuring out how can we do it? Who can help us? What is the right path? And, and that means that, all right, well, maybe maybe we do have to make some con some concessions for a while. Maybe it means we we step back in a certain way in one area, but in it we can empower and have investments to do other things. Just like we we didn't live in a fancy house and have fancy new cars, but it gave Rika the opportunity to explore what her options were for school and then go to school with no debt. That was a nice, that was nice for us to, and it, it's paid huge dividends for us now. I would say that what I've seen happen is it is interesting, this whole like living life, you know, paying bills, running a house. I'd say that I would say that kind of falls more on me to do those things. And Chris is the dreamer and Chris is the builder <laughs> of the wealth. Truly. I mean, I run my business. I'm just a, a solo person. Um, so I would say that I do that. And then I you know, take care of the bills, make sure everything is paid so that so maybe it's a division of roles a little bit. Um, and that I would say if you do dream, you can pay the bills. But if you are going to dream about doing something that you end up, uh, what's that philosophy about the stones and putting it in a jar and you take, do the biggest ones versus the rocks. So you would do, spend some time doing that first. And, and maybe at the beginning of the day or whenever you're the most energized and the most, you know, like ready to go, do that first. And then this bills have to get paid. Keep, you know, put pay the bills after that. But do the thing that's most important to move the move towards your goal of whatever it is to get it done. And then bills will always be there. You have a, you know, um, how do I say, a schedule in place as to when bills get paid and things like that. So I think you just have to be kind of a bit routine about bills and, and life. That's And then with your dream, you still, in a way, you have to be routine with that, but kind of, uh, what does Chris say, take one bite, take a bite of an elephant one bite at a time kind of thing with the, with the big goals. So um, it's a, sort of a bit of a balancing act, I would say. Absolutely. And when we think about this plan or even planning, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. And so, you know, one thing we try to give our listeners and our audience is what is maybe one actionable item that they could do today to get them jump started on even embarking on this journey of planning? You, you've done the balance wheel. And you're so you're aware of that. If go to the, you know, because they're listening, go to the site. It's free. Doesn't cost anything. It takes about five minutes and it'll give you immediate results. It's on life on hyphen your terms.com. And when you when you look at it, just look at where you are and, and pick three things based on that. Just three simple things. What can I do to improve this? And if it means that maybe I don't feel as strong with my relationship with my wife right now. Then schedule out date nights for the next two weeks. If it's, I don't feel like I'm in control of my time and I'm tired, well, then put the cell phone in the other room. But do the balance wheel, create that awareness and go, wow, I'm kicking ass in some of these places. And some of these places, I've got some opportunities. What, what are three things I can do to start improving today? Yeah, and just to give people a more detailed listen, and I'll 
I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, but the balance wheel really looks at these very important areas of your life and, and really looks at the values in, in each of those areas and assessing where you're at and how you can do better and really prioritizing those areas of your life. So it is a very, very um, helpful exercise to kind of, as Chris mentioned, to assess where you're at and figure out where you're going to focus your energy. Because yes, you may have all these goals and, and these aspirations and we can only do as much as our bandwidth will allow or so we're going to burn out as most people are in their jobs right now. Um, and that brings up a good context of I uh, wanted to get your thoughts as you see more and more people um, in during the pandemic and, you know, coming on this tail end, hopefully things are get things are getting a little bit better with less hospitalizations. But now that the world is changing, a lot of people are working from home. Um, has that changed kind of your way of working with people or have people's conceptualizations of work changed? I can say that for us and not meaning in a bad way. Um, we've been able to absolutely thrive through COVID. We both had COVID and, and it's tragic for the people who've gotten really sick and died and there's no doubt. But but for us, I think it it elevated an, the people's ability to work remotely. And, and the fact that we live at 10,000 feet buried in the trees on acreage in a small retreat center in Colorado, we feel like the luckiest people on the planet. We've got two Zoom studios and I've worked with people in the UK, the West Coast and the East Coast today. I mean, it's just, it's extraordinary. So I think in a lot of ways, it's giving some people time back from a travel perspective. I think, um, but, but you do have to put intentionality around making sure you have the socialization that fits for you and what your versions of socialization. And, and it's, I'm not saying anything that people don't know, but I, I think that that business and work is going to change dramatically over the next few years. What's acceptable, what people want. I think the idea of a 40-hour work week to an 80-hour work week, I think some people are going to embrace 20-hour work weeks. Um, I think people are going to, I think everything is going to get completely turned on its head. So it's it's fascinating. Where we live, there's a ton of tourists and hipsters that drive through in <laughs> minivans and, you know, and they're living and working out of their vans and they're thriving, living life on their terms. And we love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think um, that there is an element of making sure with when you do everything virtually is that you do have this social, you, we still are, we still need human contact. Uh, we need that connection. It's, we can't, we can do everything on Zoom or on virtually in any way, but we also, and we also have to uh, meet with people and be face to face with them not necessarily for counseling, more as on a friendship level, do things together, talk, eat dinner, have parties, ride bikes, go for walks, things like that. Um, that is really important. We are still social creatures and we we need that. What I would say is that it is interesting, I think virtually, that you can still, in a way, you think you can't have that kind of intimacy but, you know, I'm sure, you know, Stephanie, working with couples on a screen like we are now, it's a bit it's in a way more a little bit more intense because you're having to watch the person here and watch the person over there and see what they're doing. And um, you think this is a lot of work and it's harder in, to some extent than being in an office together. But you adjust and you figure it out. So I think this whole virtual thing, you it was hard at first, but people figured it out and are taking advantage of it because it does save time I have a lot of the reason I didn't have I don't have my office anymore is because people were saying we like the fact that we can be anywhere mm -hmm. and and have us have a therapy session with you and we don't have to drive and we could do it in our lunch hour and all sorts of things I mean it's it's been working amazingly well so I think yes do things virtually and it was something I wanted to do for a long time and COVID um, moved it along faster, made it happen quicker. Um, but I would say you have to have the social aspect of your life too. You can't. And that's the other thing, you know, it's nice to be out and about moving around. So you've got to figure out how to be out and about and moving around in a different way, I would say, if if you haven't already. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's just a whole 
different world and everyone's trying to navigate it. I mean, I never thought that my kids would have to wear masks and, you know, all these kinds of things. It's, it's a totally different way of growing up, but that's what they know, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to speak to seeing patients online, I love it. And, you know, part of it is one thing that we haven't really talked about is the safety piece. I mean, a lot of us as psychologists, um, work and, and, you know, work with some, um, some folks that are really compromised. And I, I, I work at a veterans hospital, as I told Chris, and there are times where our safety can be threatened and there's that extra layer of protection. Um, and the other part is I am never late. I, it, I'm not a morning person. So when you were saying, oh, have some conversations in the morning or the night, I'm like, yeah, if my husband tries to talk to me in the morning, you're not going to get anywhere because you probably won't, <laughs> you won't get anything from me. Um, but yeah, I'm never late and anymore. And, and so I think there's a lot of benefits to kind of the shift and being able to adjust. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm curious, uh, where can people learn more about what you do? And if you can leave folks with maybe some of some examples of goals that you guys have for this, this remainder of the year. Well, people can, uh, can go to our site, which is life on hyphen your terms.com, or we're both on LinkedIn. And um, actually we, we actually practice what we preach. I carry this around. This is our own little roadmap. And uh, I will read a couple of our very intense personal goals. They're kind of silly, but I'll tell you. Um, for us, this is how big it is. Refine and implement ideal AM, PM routine with meditation, reading, stretching, sleeping, and gratitude. Okay. Some people say that's not much, but for us, it, it's a good thing. Um, book out our travel adventures for two months plus we take two to three months off a year and we wanted to make sure we got behind on that with COVID and we wanted to get caught back up on that. Um, Rika has a uh, personal one. Do you mind Rika? Mm -mm. Okay. Create a proactive plan and implement uh, transition to a three-day work week. So she's very intentionally putting that behind it. And then um for me, build team, support materials and processes to promote, launch, life on your terms, speaking and podcast life. So Stephanie, thank you for helping me achieve that too. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That that everything that you said is so impactful. And um it's it's clear you guys are, you know, living life on your terms and truly embodying what you're telling other people to do, which is not always the case for everybody, you know? And so it's really hard to take our own advice. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you, Stephanie, very much for giving us the opportunity. So thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, this is, this is so humbling. And, and thank you so much for the work you do with our veterans. I, that is, that is God's work. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Color Success Podcast. Listen, like, subscribe on all major streaming platforms, YouTube, IG, and if you want exclusive content, you can join our Patreon. All links can be found at colorofsuccesspodcast.com.